Hello, my name is Shannon Reed, and I'm a Master's of Nursing student at Athabasca University. In this presentation, I will be comparing the classic nursing theory, the Newman System Model Theory, and the contemporary nursing theory, the Comfort Theory, to a practice scenario. First, I will describe the practice scenario. Then I will discuss key concepts of each theory related to the practice scenario. And finally, I will analyze the strengths and limitations of each theory. I am an orthopedic nurse and chose a scenario related to my practice in order to discuss how these theories would guide my care in real life. In my practice scenario, a 76-year-old English-speaking male patient with a history of osteoarthritis is admitted into a semi-private room on the orthopedic unit after receiving an elective right hip replacement. The nurse performs an initial assessment. The patient has a dressing to the right hip and reports 6 on 10 right hip pain. All other assessment findings are normal. The patient states that he lives with his healthy wife and asks the nurse, what is the plan and can my wife visit? The first theory we will discuss is the Newman System Model Theory, created by registered nurse Betty Newman, who, after receiving her nursing license in 1947 and master's in 1966, with a focus on psychology and public health, was appointed chair and faculty member of the University of California Los Angeles Mental Health and Public Health Consultation Program. Within her new role, Betty Newman started developing nursing models for teaching and practice, and in 1972, created the Newman System Model Theory. According to an article written by Olo Wakir and O'Connell Wan from 2015, in the Newman System Model Theory, the client is the patient, family, or community that the nurse is working with. There are five variables that contribute to the client's core structure of survival factors, and they are physiological, developmental, psychological, sociocultural, and spiritual. The core structure of survival factors is protected by internal lines of resistance that, when effective, adapt to stressors and establish the stable state of the client's health, termed the normal line of defense. Beyond the normal line of defense is the flexible line of defense. Its strength fluctuates and is the buffer to the normal line of defense. Stressors have the potential to disrupt the normal line of defense, and nursing is required when the patient's flexible line of defense is unable to protect the normal line of defense. According to Olo Wakir and Okola Wan 2015, in the Newman System Model Theory, nurses work through the nursing process, first assessing the patient's core structure of survival factors, as well as actual and potential stressors. In this practice scenario, physiological pain, decreased mobility, and wound healing are identified as actual stressors, and wound infection is a potential physical stressor. An actual psychological stressor would be anxiety related to the recovery process. From the socio-cultural perspective, the patient has a supportive spouse, which would strengthen his internal lines of resistance. According to Kane 2000, the patient is in Erickson's developmental stage of integrity versus despair, and from both the developmental and spiritual perspective, has the potential for feelings of despair. Again, according to the article by Ola Kawir in Okolawan 2015, based on the assessment, the nurse working through the Newman System Model Theory would then plan interventions to meet the patient's needs. Interventions can occur at the primary level to prevent a stressor from disrupting the normal line of defense, the secondary level to strengthen the internal lines of resistance when stress has broken through the normal line of defense, and at the tertiary level, which focuses on interventions that allow for readjusting to a stable state of well-being. Table 1 on this slide depicts the nursing interventions that would be performed based on the nursing assessment from this scenario. To manage pain, the nurse would use secondary strategies and would place the patient in a comfortable position in bed, apply ice to the joint, and supply pain medication. To manage decreased mobility, the nurse would use secondary strategies to manage pain, thus allowing for the patient to participate in physiotherapy. To promote wound healing and prevent infection, the nurse would use the secondary intervention of performing daily dressing changes while using the primary intervention of maintaining sterile technique throughout. To manage anxiety, the nurse would use the secondary intervention of reviewing the plan of care with the patient. To provide support to the patient and prevent despair, the nurse could use the primary strategy of involving the wife in the patient's care. Tertiary strategies would take place at discharge when the nurse would provide teaching related to continued healing and readjustments that will happen when the patient goes home. 
according to Kane 2000, using the Newman system model theory to guide care for patients post hip surgery has been proven to improve patient outcomes. Next, we will explore the comfort theory, which was created by Catherine Kolkaba, who obtained her master's degree in nursing with a specialty in gerontology in 1987. While working on her master's degree, she also worked as a charge nurse on a dementia unit, where she began theorizing about comfort. After completing her master's degree, Catherine Kolkaba worked on her doctorate in nursing, where she eventually developed the comfort theory. In the comfort theory, comfort is comprised of three states, relief, ease, and transcendence, and occurs in four contexts, physical, psycho-spiritual, environmental, and socio-cultural. According to Kalkaba 1994, in the first phase of the comfort theory, the nurse assesses the unmet comfort needs of their patient, performs nursing interventions, and then evaluates their interventions. Table two on this slide was filled in using information from this practice scenario, where the nurse would provide physical relief of pain and psycho-spiritual relief from anxiety related to the recovery process, using the same interventions as in the Newman system model theory. To provide sociocultural relief from the absence of family, the nurse would inform the wife that she can visit the patient and provide the patient with a hospital telephone. To provide environmental relief from lack of privacy, the nurse would close the separation curtain between patients. According to Kalkaba 2019b, in the second phase of the comfort theory, the relationship between the patient's comfort and the patient's health-seeking behaviors are analyzed. Enhanced comfort results in the patient engaging in health-seeking behaviors. And overall, this leads to the healthcare institutions where nurses work also having improved outcomes. In the third and final phase of the comfort theory, the impact that patient comfort has on health institutions is assessed. According to Gay Kitier and Kara Bullet 2017, providing comfort to postoperative patients results in improved health seeking behaviors, such as increased ability to participate in physiotherapy, and this leads to decreased length of hospital stay and hospital costs. Strengths and limitations of the two theories are displayed in Table 3, where both the Newman System Model Theory and the Comfort Theory are holistic and patient-centered theories that are easy for nurses to integrate into a variety of healthcare settings. An identified limitation of the Newman System Model Theory is that the theory involves multiple terms and concepts that can cause confusion, making it difficult for nurses to apply into practice. An identified limitation of the Comfort Theory is that it insufficiently addresses activities beyond those related to comfort that can also improve patient well-being, such as dressing changes. In conclusion, both the comfort theory and the Newman system model theory are useful and relevant theories that when used to guide nursing practice in this scenario, aided in improving patient outcomes. Thank you for listening. The next two slides list the references used throughout my presentation.